It may at first seem like Karl Polichuk lives a double life. On the one hand, he is a successful IT solutions provider, operating KP Enterprises. On the other, he is growing what started out as a sideline interest, Great Little Book Publishing Company. These two businesses, while separate and distinct in many ways, are still interrelated, just as Carl sees the importance of being personally interrelated with the rest of the industry. KP Enterprises, one of the most respected channel companies in Sacramento, complements and feeds Carl's publishing business as Carl, a prolific writer, cranks out technical manuals, self-help books, newsletters, and blogs. Consider the premise behind Relax, Focus, Succeed. His book dedicated to helping people improve themselves, handle adversity, and achieve their most ambitious of objectives while maintaining work-life balance. The book provides straightforward advice to finding success without working yourself to death. Of course, his rapid-fire approach to decisions and relentless focus on execution helps bring myriad ideas, people, and goals together quickly. Carl's unapologetic stance on success through failure emboldens those around him to fearlessly take action without looking back. Carl keeps his 15-year-old IT company up on the latest trends, always looking to the future. He is known by many to be a man of discipline with a focus on execution, but it's hard for him to imagine holding success above his commitment to family and enjoying the simple things in life. It's complicated to say the least, especially considering that Carl also suffers from debilitating rheumatoid arthritis but he's got a formula that works. One that can also make you, your life, and your business more rewarding. Join us now for a day in the life of Carl Polichuk, a man who continues to make his mark in the IT profession while making a difference in the lives of others every day and every way he can. Carl is what I would describe as a visionary type leader. He's a person that understands the 10,000 foot view and can translate it down to right to the desktop. And I think he has a vision of the industry and a vision of the community that many people lack. And that's one of the things that provides great leadership in our community. Somebody with vision for the future because we all tend to work in the moment. Carl works both in the moment and in the future. One of the reasons I think Carl's been successful with his business um, is the willingness to go ahead and try something, uh, to think out of the box and to, uh, to be innovative. I think the most common mistake that I see with solution providers is that they get to a point and they don't make a decision. They don't take action. They get stuck on the fence, sometimes for years. It's amazing, for example, with managed services, so many people have been trying to make a decision about a tool for years and years and years. And Around them, lots of people are trying one thing. Some of them have even tried one tool and moved to another tool. So in the, in the span of time where they've tried to make one decision, other people have just kept moving and have not quite rolled over them, but certainly rolled past them and grown their businesses and, and made really good decisions. But you can't, you can't get stuck. And I think a lot of solution providers get stuck one way or another. And they just don't have a faith that if they move forward, they're going to figure it out. They want to make the right decision. And if you wait for the right decision, you may never do anything. Well, I think Carl stays in and ahead of the, the, the wave and the, and the curve on all these technologies because, yes, he, um, he's deep in the industry. The people he talks to, the events he goes to, the things that he's, he's got his hands in, whether it's because he blogs on a regular basis and it's, it's kind of true that, that when you talk to people about technology, everybody that's in the conversation learns something. It, even if you're the guy that knows the most, you learn where people are falling behind. You learn where people are having trouble. You learn where people are, have new ideas that you haven't thought of. And all of, if you're smart, all that gets incorporated in your solution as you move forward. And it's just built in. I love exchanging ideas with people. And many consultants are afraid of doing that. They think somehow that they're gonna give away their big secrets. Well, I'm sorry, you're making $120,000 a year, you have no secrets. If you're just starting out and you got three clients, you have no secrets. You know, I could give you all of the secrets that I have in my business. You could set up business across the street, have employees that look like mine and processes that look like mine and a salesperson that looks like mine and a marketing company that looks like mine. And at the end of the day, if you don't get up and make 10 phone calls, you're not gonna get a new client. And that's the secret. The secret is you have to execute. 
And every day, every day, every day, you have to go figure out what your business does and just go do it. And you know, so, so I like helping people exchange information and spread ideas. And in many ways, I'm, you know, people say I give to the community. And I give to the community by taking all of their information and, and using it in my own company. So what goes around comes around. Carl understands that the sales process is not a magical art. A lot of business owners think that if we just go push the salespeople harder and, and tell them we need more, we need more, that, that that's going to be all it takes. Uh, but what Carl gets is that sales is a process. And, and if you have a process or a system in place and you follow the system, you follow the process, then you're going to get the outcome that you are looking for. And being able to work with somebody like that is, is very, um, I, I appreciate it a lot because it makes the difference between somebody who just comes to you constantly and says, are, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there? Why aren't we there yet? Why aren't we there yet? To where are we in the process? You know, are we, are we following the process? Did, did you make your calls today? Um, how many appointments do you have scheduled for next week? You know, what's in the pipeline? And so working with somebody who gets that side of the sales process is, is really um, a, a delight because, you know, working for the folks who, who think that it's just some mystical art and if you find the right salesperson, you know, everything's gonna be okay, that's, that's much more difficult. One of the main reasons Carl is successful is because he uh, knows how to communicate very well. I think part of it comes from um, the fact that he never lets anything from the outside influence what he's doing right now. I manage my work and I do not let my work manage me. And as a result, I always move things forward because everything's scheduled and everything is planned. And I think most people don't operate that way. They let they're like ping pong balls that respond to their environment rather than, you know, deciding that they're going to decide what the environment looks like and moving in that direction. I would bet, and I don't have scientific information, but I would bet that probably five to ten percent of the people in this business have some kind of long-range plan. The rest of them get up every day and they pretty much wait for the phone to ring, and every day. They just wait, and if the phone rings, they work, and if the phone doesn't ring, they don't work. And the worst part about that is most of them, whenever the phone rings, they pick it up, they answer it, and they go straight to work on that thing. They're totally interrupt-driven. They don't have a process, they don't have a plan, they don't prioritize things, and the last person to call them is the person who has their attention. He's, he's inventive. He, he's not going to get stale. He's not going to have the small business mentality where I don't want to grow too big or too fast, but he... he uh, he does it well. He's very good at helping you remove the roadblocks of when you butt up against a concrete wall or a problem that you just can't get past. No one ever needs to be overwhelmed by the fact that we have thousands of clients and thousands of desktops and all of these things that need to be done because everybody only has one job in front of them at the moment. Carl is constantly looking for new ways to grow, move and succeed. He is really flexible on new ideas and not standing, you know, in the same in the same area and he's always moving and always looking for new technologies, new ways to help clients and really um, working on it. I like working with Carl because he, he does look after our business. He doesn't just respond to problems, he uh, he suggests solutions or, or improvements and he, um, he works well with my business. I, I believe that Carl's approach is a very personal approach. Um, I believe that in today's world, too many people are watching out for their bottom line and they eliminate too much of the personal aspect of it. And Carl has strived very hard, certainly in all the five years that we've worked with him, has strived very hard to uh, keep that element of the personal. And I think that that's important because if a company doesn't have an understanding of your company and doesn't have that personal connection, how can they really understand how to help you? And I think that that's where Carl excels in that regard. Uh, his whole company excels. He has the way that he trains his individuals there. They are trained with that same mentality of we're here to help our customers, we're here to build a relationship with them so that in the future they feel comfortable coming to us and saying these are our needs, what do you think? And I think in some regards it also helps because 
if you have a better understanding of where the company's going, you can anticipate um, different solutions that somebody who isn't as personal wouldn't have any clue as to what to suggest. We're constantly thinking ahead about what's beyond the horizon that they can see. Because it's not their job to think about technology, it's our job to think about technology. You know, Carl tells us what the picture looks like. We can see the pieces, we just make it happen. And, and again, we've got, um, I would say at least three companies that we already know. We know their cloud com computing plan already. Um, and, and the client hasn't even been, we haven't mentioned it to them, but we know how it would go. Today, the biggest barrier to cloud computing is that people don't know what it is. At the same time, there's a lot of people who get the idea that if I could just not have to buy another server, it would be great. A client told me a few months ago, if you told me that this was my last server, I'd be the happiest person on earth. Because they, don't, they, they, they know that every three years they have this huge expenditure, six or seven thousand dollars plus labor, ten thousand, twelve thousand dollars. Nobody wants that. People like to have a nice steady income and a nice steady outgo and if we can get them there through cloud services, they're gonna be very, very happy with that. In many ways, the move to the cloud is very similar to the move to, to manage services. It's a different mindset about how your technology works. It's a different mindset from the consultant about how you sell it and how you provide it. And a lot of people could be successful in this if they just tried. But um, I think a lot of technicians, they like the way things were done in the old days and they want to stay there. Um, and they're going to find that people like me are going to come in and take their clients. Carl and I have actually had many discussions about the future of our businesses and the way that we deliver services to our clients. And we both recognize that what we're doing today and what we've done in the past won't really be our method of delivering services in the future. Many of the things that are changing are changing because of the internet and we've been looking forward to cloud-based solutions to augment the traditional client-server on-premises type of model that we've all tended to use. I think that those that don't understand that the way we deliver infrastructure is going to become irrelevant to our clients will be left behind. Those people that concentrate on hardware and network implementation and are known as the computer guy will soon be on the bookshelf right next to the other person called buggy whip manufacturer. So if you're not a good business consultant and if you're not driving innovation for your clients in a way that helps them increase their revenue, decrease their expenses, or improve productivity, you will be a historical artifact soon. We're moving towards a model where you buy what you need when you need it and you buy less when you need less. So as your company goes up and down, what you spend on technology goes up and down. I don't think that clients want to know about processors and CPU and memory and all that. And if you think about, my favorite analogy is the cell phone and voicemail. Voicemail used to be on a little tape machine and then it became built into the telephone and then it was just built into the wall and now Nobody knows where it is. How, how many processors are there on the server that holds your voicemail and where is it located and what's it next to and who owns it and nobody cares. They just pay $4.95 a month and they get voicemail. And it's going to be the same thing with email and CRM and SQL and all the other services. So you have to, I think you have to find analogies that help clients understand these things and then talk in terms of those analogies. I think that Carl is is not the nerd that you see on The Simpsons. He's a he's a real guy with a family and interests, and uh, he, he's easy to talk to on a variety of subjects. He's he's well informed. Primarily, Carl is very thorough in the way that he explains something. He'll start with a concept and move through that to its logical conclusion, and all of the intermediate steps are there so that it paints a complete picture whether it's for a client, for an associate, or for our user group. And I think that the ability to speak well and transmit an idea clearly is invaluable. I think it's very easy for Carl to basically say a few words and everybody just kind of understands and, and he lets everybody else kind of build on top of that, but he said it with the first couple words. I have a whole set of priorities in place and every day everybody in this company moves each of those things forward a little bit, a little bit, a little bit.
it's always a surprise when he he comes walking in in the morning. There, he's had a great big idea of you know let's let's start you know and and do you know this new project or let's start this new you know new um, uh, arm of the business and it's I never know what it's going to be, um, but it's it's always exciting and it's always creative and it's it's always keeps me on my toes <laughs> on what we're going to do next. I think that he does what he does because he loves to do it, not just because he has to do it. And I think if he didn't have to do it, that he wouldn't. He usually has fun, actually, with his work. I, I kind of get on him sometimes because we'll be just hanging out in the evenings watching TV or something, and he's over at his desk on his computer, and I think he's working, but um, sometimes he's not. Sometimes he's just online or like looking at YouTube or something. But even if he is working, I'm kind of like, Dad, why, why are you working right now? It's like 8 o'clock at night, you should be relaxing. He says, well, it's fun. I like my job. I, you know, I want to do this. I'm not really working. So <laughs> he kind of works for fun. I define success very simply as reaching the goals that you have set for yourself. And in some ways, I guess you get to cheat a little bit on this because you get to de determine what your goals are, and then you get to determine whether or not you've met them. But in many ways, I think people haven't stopped and thought about what they want to do. Businesses go on just doing whatever they did last year or the year before. They haven't thought about where they want to be in one or two or three or five years. And I think you need to think about that. You need to take time and figure out where you want to go and how you're going to get there, and then you can proceed to get there. And when you do, you'll be successful. If you can be happy every day in your business, Man, you're the most successful person I know.